Gotham, a city shrouded in darkness, perpetually teetering on the edge of chaos. Gargoyles watched from rooftops, silent sentinels against a backdrop of perpetual twilight. But even Gotham, accustomed to the bizarre and the macabre, had never witnessed an event as cataclysmic as this. Reality itself fractured, the very fabric of existence strained. Dimensions, once separate and distinct, began to bleed into one another. This was not a gentle merging, but a violent collision, a cosmic car crash of realities. From this maelstrom of interdimensional energy, a figure emerged. Not of Gotham, not of this world. Iron Man, sheathed in metal and powered by technology beyond human comprehension, stumbled through the dimensional rift. His arrival was heralded by a sonic boom, a shockwave that rippled through the city, shaking its foundations. Disoriented, his sensors overloaded by the chaotic energies, Tony Stark found himself in a world both familiar and profoundly alien. James Gordon A beacon of hope in the unending night of Gotham. A symbol of unwavering integrity in a city drowning in corruption. A friend, a confidant, an ally. His gruff exterior hit a heart of gold, a dedication to justice that never wavered. Even amongst the shadows and the villains, even facing down the darkest corners of the human soul, Commissioner Gordon stood tall. He was the moral compass of Gotham, a guiding light in a city perpetually shrouded in darkness. But on this night, even the incorruptible Jim Gordon was not safe. An alleyway, slick with rain and shadowed by towering buildings, a place of whispers and secrets, a breeding ground for fear. It was here, in this forgotten corner of Gotham, that tragedy struck. News of Gordon's death ripped through Gotham like a hurricane. The city, already reeling from the dimensional anomaly, was plunged further into chaos. Fear, raw and primal, gripped the hearts of its citizens. The very foundation of Gotham, the fragile hope that even in this city, justice might prevail, seemed to crumble. The bat signal, a beacon of hope, now felt like a cruel reminder of what was lost. He was vengeance, he was terror, he was the night, Batman. The protector of Gotham, the embodiment of fear turned against those who preyed on the innocent. But beneath the mask, beneath the armor, was a man, a man named Bruce Wayne, and tonight he was drowning in grief. The weight of Gotham, the burden he carried on his shoulders every night became unbearable. His city, his responsibility was broken. And he knew with a certainty that chilled him to the bone who was to blame. The Bat Cave, a sanctuary of technology and shadows, felt more like a tomb. The weight of Gordon's death hung heavy in the air, suffocating, oppressive. Batman, his cowl pushed back, stared at the Bat computer's screen. The images were seared into his mind. Gordon's lifeless eyes, the pool of blood staining the grimy pavement, the faint shimmer of residual interdimensional energy. It was a trail, a clue, a whisper of something not of this world. His fists clenched, the interdimensional breach, the arrival of this Iron Man. The timing was too perfect, too coincidental. Rage, cold and calculating, pulsed through him. Gotham had been violated, its protector, his friend, murdered. And this outsider, this interloper, was to blame. He would bring him to justice, he would make him pay. Alfred Pennyworth, a man who had weathered countless storms by Bruce Wayne's side, watched his ward with a heavy heart. He saw the pain, the rage, the unshakable certainty in those eyes. He knew the depths of Bruce's grief, the bond he had shared with Commissioner Gordon, but he also saw the danger, the seductive allure of vengeance that threatened to consume his master. Master Bruce, Alfred began, his voice a calming presence in the storm of emotions swirling around them. I understand your grief your need for justice. But I urge you, proceed with caution. We know so little about this, Iron Man, about the events that transpired. To act rashly, to condemn without understanding, would be to dishonor Commissioner Gordon's memory. His words measured and calm hung in the air, a plea for reason against the tide of vengeance. Iron Man, his armor sparking, crashed into a rooftop the impact rattling his teeth. His suit, normally a marvel of engineering and power, 
was malfunctioning, the dimensional jump having taken its toll. He ran diagnostics, his HUD flickering with error messages. He was stranded in an unfamiliar world, his primary power source dwindling. He needed answers, resources, a way out. He had arrived in this Gotham, disoriented, confused. The energy signatures of the dimensional breach were chaotic, unpredictable. He was a scientist, an engineer, a man accustomed to logic and reason. This world, this city, felt like something out of a nightmare. He needed to understand, to assess the situation, to find a way back to his own reality. And he needed to do it fast. The cityscape stretched before him, a labyrinth of Gothic architecture and oppressive darkness. Gargoyles leered from rooftops, their shadows seeming to writhe in the flickering gaslight. Rain, cold and relentless, lashed against his armor, blurring his vision. He ran facial recognition software, scanning for potential allies, sources of information. Nothing. He was alone. He picked up a faint energy signature, a flicker of something familiar amidst the chaos. Technology. He needed to investigate, to see if he could salvage anything, anything at all to repair his suit. He launched himself into the night, a streak of red and gold against the backdrop of Gotham's perpetual gloom, unaware that he was being watched, hunted by a creature of the shadows. Gotham's rooftops became a battleground. Batman, a wraith in the night, stalked his prey with relentless determination. He moved like a shadow, silent, unseen, his every sense honed to a razor's edge. Below, Iron Man, his suit still malfunctioning, searched for a way out of the labyrinthine city. He was a creature of light, of technology, his every move a beacon in the darkness. A beacon that Batman aimed to extinguish. Their first encounter was brief, brutal, a clash of titans. Iron Man, caught off guard, barely had time to raise his repulsor rays before Batman was upon him a whirlwind of batarangs and grappling hooks. The force of the blow sent Iron Man crashing into a building, the impact shaking the very foundations of the structure. He had underestimated his opponent, this creature of darkness. Iron Man, his armor sparking, rose from the rubble, his HUD flashing warning messages. He had to end this fight to reason with this Batman. He had to make him understand. He raised his hands, a gesture of peace, of surrender. Hold on, I don't want to fight. I'm not the enemy here. Batman, perched atop a nearby gargoyle, remained silent. His eyes narrowed behind his mask. He was unconvinced, his every instinct screaming at him to attack, to avenge. But something in Iron Man's voice, a note of desperation, of honesty, gave him pause. As they circled each other, two predators sizing each other up, a new presence made itself known. A high-pitched laugh, echoing through the alleyway, sent chills down their spines. A green question mark, projected onto a nearby wall, pulsed ominously. Riddle me this, bats and bolts. What has a heart of gold but can't buy happiness? The Riddler, a criminal mastermind, a lover of puzzles and games, a thorn in Batman's side for years. His presence here, his timing, was no coincidence. Batman felt a cold dread creep up his spine. He had been so focused on Iron Man, on vengeance, that he had failed to see the bigger picture. I don't have time for this, Iron Man muttered, more to himself than to Batman. He needed to get back to his own universe, to fix his suit, to escape this nightmare. But something told him, some primal instinct, that this, Riddler, held the key to his escape. We have a common enemy. Batman growled, his voice low, menacing. He knew the Riddler, knew his twisted games, his love of chaos, and he knew that this time the stakes were higher than ever. Iron Man hesitated, then nodded. He didn't trust the Batman, not entirely. But he knew that alone, he was outmatched. He needed to play along, to use this alliance to his advantage. An uneasy truce was struck, a temporary alliance forged in the face of a common enemy. Two heroes from different worlds, with different methods, united against a threat that could shatter both their realities. The Riddler's game was afoot, a deadly puzzle box of riddles and traps spread across Gotham. Each clue, a taunt, 
each challenge, a test of their intellect and their will. Batman, a master detective, navigated the labyrinthine streets with grim determination, his mind working overtime to decipher the Riddler's cryptic clues. Iron Man, his suit still compromised, relied on his technological prowess, his sensors scanning for anomalies, his AI analyzing patterns. He's toying with us. Batman growled, his voice tight with frustration. The Riddler thrived on chaos, on pushing his adversaries to their limits. Every step closer to the truth seemed to lead to another dead end, another cruel joke. Yeah, well, two can play at this game, Iron Man retorted, his voice laced with a steely determination. He may not have known this city, this enemy, but he was no stranger to games of wit and technological warfare. Despite their differences, their methods began to complement each other. Batman, with his intimate knowledge of Gotham's underbelly, guided their pursuit, anticipating the Riddler's moves. Iron Man's technology provided an edge, his repulsors blasting through obstacles, his holographic projections creating diversions. There. Batman pointed to a building, a dilapidated theater, its neon sign flickering erratically. Gordon was a fan of the theater, the Riddler knows that. Let's see if he left us an encore. Iron Man said, a ghost of a smirk on his face. He might be out of his element, but he was starting to enjoy this unorthodox partnership. The theater was a death trap, rigged with explosives and riddled with false leads. Each step was a gamble, each shadow a potential enemy. The Riddler's laughter echoed through the empty auditorium, mocking their every move. You see, Bats, I knew you'd blame the outsider, the shiny new toy. It's in your nature to shoulder the blame, to seek vengeance in the shadows. Batman froze, the Riddler's words striking a chord deep within him. Had he been so blinded by his grief, his need for justice, that he had played right into the Riddler's hands? Had he condemned an innocent man? Iron Man watched Batman, his sensors picking up the subtle shift in his posture, the tightening of his jaw. He had seen this before, the weight of guilt, the burden of responsibility. He knew, without a doubt, that Batman was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. Don't listen to him, Batman. He's trying to divide us, to distract us. We need to focus on stopping him, on getting justice for Gordon. Batman looked at Iron Man, his eyes narrowed, searching for any hint of deception. But all he saw was sincerity, a shared desire for justice. He had been wrong to blame Iron Man, to let his grief cloud his judgment. He had a debt to repay, a wrong to right. The Riddler, his usual smugness replaced by a look of genuine surprise, found himself disarmed, his latest deadly puzzle dismantled by the unlikely duo. Batman, his expression a mixture of fury and remorse, stood before the captured villain. Gordon's death, it was all your doing. He growled, his voice barely a whisper, yet carrying the weight of a suppressed storm. Oh, Batsy, always so quick to blame, so eager to punish. But look at your shiny new friend. Look what he brought with him. Chaos, destruction, a whole new world of suffering. He gestured wildly towards Iron Man, attempting to sow further discord. Iron Man, his suit almost fully operational thanks to Batman's resources and his own ingenuity, remained silent, observing the exchange with a newfound understanding of Batman's methods and the depths of his pain. He had been wrongly accused, hunted, but he recognized the underlying grief fueling Batman's actions. Silence. Batman roared, silencing the Riddler with a glare. He turned towards Iron Man, his expression softening slightly. I misjudged you, Stark. The blame for Gordon's death lies solely with this monster. He gestured towards the subdued Riddler, his voice laced with regret. The Batcave, once again a haven of technology and strategy, hummed with the quiet energy of repairs and closure. You know, for a guy who dresses like a giant bat, you've got quite the tech collection. Iron Man, his suit now gleaming under the harsh cave lighting, made final adjustments to his arc reactor, a faint hum signaling its restored power. Batman, his cowl pushed back, watched him work, a silent apology in his stance. We all have our ways of fighting the darkness, Stark. Yeah, guess we do. Look, about Gordon, I'm sorry, Batman. No one deserves to lose someone like that. The Dimensional Rift, once a chaotic maw threatening to swallow Gotham whole, had stabilized, now a shimmering portal pulsing with contained energy. 
Iron Man, ready to return to his own world, his own fight, turned back to Batman, a newfound respect in his eyes. You're not so bad yourself, Bats. Just try to trust a little more, yeah? Not everyone who shows up in a shiny suit is out to destroy your city. Batman nodded, a silent acknowledgement of the truth in Iron Man's words. Be careful out there, Stark, and thank you. Iron Man stepped into the portal, his figure dissolving into particles of light as the rift began to close, leaving Batman alone in the damp, silent cave. The bat signal, a beacon of hope against the Gotham skyline, illuminated the rain clouds, a silent promise to a city still reeling from the events of the past few days. Batman, perched atop Wayne Tower, watched the city below, his cape billowing in the wind. I had been quick to judge, blinded by grief and fueled by a thirst for vengeance. I'd almost condemned an innocent man, a potential ally, to satisfy my own need for retribution. The weight of my mistake, of Gordon's death, settles heavily on my shoulders. But amidst the shadows of doubt, a flicker of truth emerges. I've learned a valuable lesson, a reminder that even in the darkest of times, hope can emerge from unexpected places. I glimpse the heart beneath the armor, the humanity behind the technology. I am Batman, the protector of Gotham, but even I am not infallible. I will honor Gordon's memory, not just by avenging his death, but by striving to be better, to see past my own prejudices, to seek truth in a world shrouded in shadows. The fight for justice for Gotham's soul is far from over, and I will face it as I always have, head on, with a newfound clarity and a renewed sense of purpose. Each time I watch, I see my own failings reflected back at me, the rush to judgment, the blind rage, the unshakable certainty that had ultimately proven false. I had always prided myself on my intellect, my ability to see through deception to anticipate my enemy's moves, but this time my emotions had clouded my judgment, leading me down a path of vengeance that almost cost me an ally. Iron Man, the outsider, the anomaly, had been right. Not everyone who arrives in Gotham cloaked in shadows or sheathed in metal, is an enemy. Sometimes the greatest threats wear familiar faces hide behind smiles and riddles and exploit the very pain they claim to soothe. The city above is quiet, the usual cacophony of sirens and screams muted by the aftermath of the dimensional breach and the Riddler's games. It is a fragile piece, I know, a temporary reprieve in a city that thrives on chaos. But for now, I allow myself a moment of introspection, of reflection. I had always believed myself to be in control, a master manipulator of fear, a symbol of unwavering resolve. But the events of the past few days have shaken me, revealing the cracks in my armor, the vulnerabilities I had kept hidden even from myself. I had been so focused on the shadows, on the darkness I had sworn to combat, that I had failed to see the light, the light of truth, of understanding, of forgiveness. Iron Man, despite being from another world, despite being initially perceived as a threat, had shown me that. He had seen past the mask, past the anger and the grief, and offered a hand of friendship of alliance. It is a lesson I won't soon forget. Narrator, media, two superheroes standing united, alliance handshake. The Batcave was silent, the only sound the gentle hum of the Bat computer. Batman, still in his armor, stood before its vast screens, replaying the events of the past few days. The dimensional rift, the arrival of Iron Man Gordon's death, the Riddler's manipulations, the uneasy alliance, the final confrontation. It played out before him like a horrifying film on repeat. The first rays of dawn pierced through the cracks in the Batcave ceiling, casting long, eerie shadows on the walls. Batman, his face etched with exhaustion and newfound determination, finally shed his armor, the weight of it heavier than usual. He was Bruce Wayne again, if only for a few precious hours. I ascended to Wayne Manor. The familiar surroundings a stark contrast to the gothic depths I usually inhabited. Alfred, my ever faithful butler, awaited me, a cup of steaming tea in his hands. There were no words exchanged, no need for explanations. Alfred had seen it all before, the toll that Gotham took on my soul. As I sipped the tea, the warmth spreading through me, I thought about the future. Gotham will always be Gotham, a city teetering on the edge of madness, a breeding ground for the darkest impulses of humanity. 
but I will be there as I always have been, a watchful guardian, a silent protector. I will honor Gordon's memory by continuing the fight, by striving to be better, to be more than just a creature of vengeance. I have glimpsed a different path, a path where trust isn't a weakness, where alliances can be forged in the face of overwhelming odds. I have seen the power of forgiveness, the importance of seeing past the surface, of recognizing the shared humanity that binds us all, even across dimensions, even in the face of unimaginable loss. The sun climbs higher, bathing Gotham in a soft, golden light. It is a new day, a chance to start again, to learn from my mistakes, to be a better Batman, a better man. The shadows will always be there, lurking in the alleys, whispering in the darkness. But I will face them, head on, armed with the lessons learned and the knowledge that even in Gotham, even in the darkest of nights, dawn eventually breaks.